Oh no, there's a coffee cup in the shot. <gasps> what are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to CYC. My name's Nathan Hayes, and today I wanna to dive a little further into resilience. I've mentioned it in the intro video that there's different types of resilience, but in this video, I want to go through the questions that are asked to measure resilience, whether that's in like a clinical setting or in like a research study. And I think you'll find this interesting because not all the questions come like straight on. There are those kind of side questions that you might not expect. And I think you'll be able to get some, something from that. Now, while there are multiple scales and questionnaires to measure resilience, there are three in the forefront according to a 2011 review. The Connor Davidson scale is one of those. You can look this up, but we will be going through all 25 questions of it in this video. While we're going through, though, I want you to be careful because this scale focuses very much on that internal personal resilience. I think there's only like two questions on the social network or social resources that you have. That's it, that's really small. But do not think that that social support isn't important. One of the other main three questionnaires that measures resilience is called the social protective factor scale. And that measures, obviously, social protective factors, all that network, all that, that safety net. So do not think that the social is not important. It really is. But just this scale, the Connor Davidson scale, kind of just tries to focus, focus on that internal resilience aside from tries to separate it out and just isolate that kind of internal resilience. So keep that in mind. The Connor Davidson scale breaks resilience up into five subscales. Personal competence, acceptance of change and secure relationships. Trust in and tolerance of the strengthening effects of stress, control and spiritual influences. Now while we're going through the questions, you can try and decipher the questions into those like five subscales, but I'd kind of rather you don't. I'd rather you take the questions as they come and use this video as like a personal reflection rather than like an educational video. Now that might make this video like difficult to watch through, as if they're not all difficult to watch through. Well, anyway, <laughs> but it might make it more difficult to watch through because uh, self-reflection can be kind of draining sometimes. It can, it, it can be difficult. It's like, it's difficult a lot of the time. So I'm going to leave links below in the description and at the end of the video as well for services where you can find someone to talk or find counselling or whatever. So like if you find any of the questions that kind of stick with you or you kind of just walk away from it, but it's still kind of playing on you or whatever, I do want you to be kind of mindful enough to recognise it in yourself. That like, you know, you might need to talk about it, that this thing is kind of irritating you, whatever it is. I'm going to leave links below if you need them talk to a friend if you need them, whatever it is, I'm kind of trusting you to reach out if you need to talk. Because like, if you need to talk, it's good to talk. I know I'm going to say that, of course I'm going to say it, but it's true, it's, it's good to talk, okay? So I'm going to trust you with that and we're going to dive straight into it. So question one, I adapt when changes occur. That's kind of, that was going to be in here, wasn't it? That's nothing new. Number two, I have close and secure relationships. Now, as I mentioned before, this scale doesn't really focus on the social, but this is one of the social questions because secure relationships are, they're important. Number three, fate or God helps me. Now this might be difficult to take on in today's world where religion isn't that popular anymore, but believing in a higher power, believing in like a bigger picture it does improve the likelihood of resilience. Now this can be because you're kind of, you're not trying to control everything or you're kind of accepting that there are some things that are outside your control or beyond your knowledge or whatever it is. It might also be that it's giving like the stresses or struggles you're going through at any given point, a bigger thing that you just don't see yet. There's all of these kind of things that are kind of in religion that you kind of, you're, it's called blind faith. Like it's, it's moving forward without the knowledge. That's kind of what it's, that's one of the functions of faith. That's one of the kind of parts of it. And you can kind of see how that leads to resilience. Number four, I can deal with whatever comes. That makes sense that that's in there. That's kind of a straight on question. Number five, past success gives confidence for new challenges. Now this question kind of has two parts. One is that 
past success gives you like self-worth and the strength and discipline needed for it, you can generalize to kind of other tasks, which is fair enough. The second part is that it says new challenges. So are you always going to be going for new challenges? Are you looking for the stress of new challenges? Are you kind of like hungry all the time because you're perhaps more adaptable then or you're kind of willing to adapt more then? Now on this channel, we're all about that. That's pretty much the whole concept of it. But do you know it? Do you know that that's kind of the, your predisposition or do you think that's your predisposition or whatever it is? Do you feel like that kind of unstoppable force that even if you get knocked down, you're just still going anyway. There's just gonna be a new challenge. It's just gonna be a new failure or a new success. It doesn't matter. You're just going for the next one. Number six, I see the humorous side of things. This indicates the ability to reframe or look at things from multiple perspectives. And that ability is our, like one of our strongest coping mechanisms. So it's really important. Number seven, coping with stress makes me stronger. If you want to read more on this kind of specific question, there's a really good book out at the end of last year by Jonathan Haidt called The Coddling of the American Mind. In that book, he explores the idea of anti-fragility, which is the ability of something to get stronger with stress rather than bending or breaking, such as your immune system. They get stronger the more bacteria attack it. It builds up more defenses. And he says that about humans as well. It's a really interesting read. Number eight, I tend to bounce back after hardship or illness. Again, this is kind of a straightforward question, just asking about your self-efficacy. Like, do you believe you can? And also like, do you identify yourself as a person who does bounce back? Because that can be important as well. Number nine, things happen for a reason. Again, this is to do with accepting the fact that you cannot control every single detail. Some things will happen outside of your control. And that's a really important milestone to reach. Number 10, I give my best effort no matter what. You might want to kind of add on here, like, you know, how honest is your best effort or like, you know, how best is your best effort? But let's skip past that one on to the next one. And now I've run out of fingers and I'm not going to start using my toes. So number 11 is I can achieve my goals. Pretty straight on question. Do you believe you can do it? Number 12, when things look bad, I don't give up. That's kind of the common understanding of what resilience is. So it's in the questionnaire. Number 13, I know where to turn for help. So this is our second question that addresses social network or social kind of safety net. It's really important. This scale does not focus on it, but don't dismiss it. It is important and it's number 13. Number 14, when under pressure, I stay focused. Now everyone can lose focus when under pressure. This question is more asking your tolerance of pressure. How often do you get overrun by pressure? Number 15, I prefer to take lead in problem solving situations. So this is asking, not only are you willing to kind of step up to responsibility and to take charge, which is a stressful position, but do you kind of chase after it? Do you look for those positions where, again, you're chasing after stress and challenges? Number 16, I'm not easily discouraged by failure. That's kind of a straight on question. That's easy enough to understand. Number 17, I think of myself as a strong person. Number 18, I can make unpopular or difficult decisions. Number 19, I can handle unpleasant feelings. Now you can see how self-management and emotional management are important to resilience. Number 20, I have to act on a hunch. Now impulsivity and lack of discipline usually result in low levels of resilience, but so does hiding in too much structure. But this is still a weird one for me. Number 21, I have a strong sense of purpose. Now keeping an eye on the big picture and not letting the little things trip you up that's really important. Number 22, I'm in control of my own life. Now fixation on control is bad, but you have to feel as if you're the captain of the ship, that you are able to make a difference, that you are able to direct your own life. You don't want someone else directing your whole life, you know? Number 23, I like challenges. Again, straightforward question. Number 24, you work to attain goals. And lastly, number 25, I take pride in my achievements. So guys, I don't know what questions resonate with you. It will be different for everybody, but I hope by going through these questions, you're able to self-reflect and realize where you're strong, where you're not strong, and hopefully that'll help in some way. Anyway, that's it for me today, guys. Let me know if you like this style of video mixed in with the more casual ones. Self-reflection isn't always easy and I don't want to be draining you every week, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye guys.